Good day everyone. My name is Bill Warner. I'm with Bunker Labs and this is week one ideation. Uh, you, you should have already reviewed the introduction to Bunker Labs and the EPIC program. It had two assignments within it. I hope you've got them done already. And there are going to be some assignments we'll go over later for ideation itself. So this is the first step. This is evaluating your business idea to see whether or not it is worth enough of your time and energy and maybe money later on uh, to proceed as a really good business idea. Let's get on with the, the next step. Now, you remember from your high school science or college science, whatever, you see it on TV all the time, that the universe started with a big bang. At least that's what a whole lot of scientists think. Well, it turns out that a business idea starts the same way. You have experiences in your life that the sum total of which, the cumulative effect of all of the experiences, sometimes reveals an idea that you really want to pursue as a business. And uh, you really don't know, many of you don't know well, how to go any further than that than just talk about the idea. So not only does a idea start with a bang, uh, something else has got to follow. And that is a bang that produces a good idea. A good idea. So what we're actually going to be talking about today is not the fact whether or not you've got a business idea, but whether or not it has any legs at all, whether it's a good idea, whether it has any possible chance of having commercial value. So that's what we're going to get into here right now. So how do you know whether or not your idea is any good or not? And we're going to help you figure that out by answering five basic questions about your idea and giving you then a chance to make an intelligent and informed decision as to whether or not you should proceed with it or not. The first question is, what's the opportunity? Now, this establishes the premise for your business. The premise really is a description of the need that you're fulfilling the need that you're fulfilling. And it could be described in a couple of different ways. The need could be a problem you're solving for a person in public life or for a part of a, of a company that has the problem. So it's kind of starting with what the heck's the problem you're solving? And you describe this problem from the point of view of the buyer, the person having the problem. The second way is that you see an opportunity to improve uh, human life or, uh, or a, a process uh, or new capability for a company. So you describe it as an opportunity that's, that is going to make life better or business better. Either way is fine, but this is establishing the premise of why you exist as a business. Just to solve this opportunity or to grasp, or sorry, to solve this problem or grasp this opportunity. Second question is, what are you offering? The solution, it's the solution to the problem <laughs> or the fulfillment of the opportunity. What is it? What are you going to do? What product is it? What service it is? And you describe how it solves the problem. Now, they sound like two easy questions, but they're very, very important. And this is harder to do than you might imagine. And you'll discover that as you get into this. It's fun to do. But if you're able to describe these two Answer, answer these two questions, and in a compelling way, filled with data and facts and experiences that you can relate to people, you will have been able to get the attention of most anyone you will talk to about your business. If anyone asks you, okay, what do you do? The thing you're going to describe is the premise of your business and the solution you provide. Bam. You'll do that in 45 seconds, and it'll get their attention. In essence, it's the elevator pitch for what it is you're doing. And later on, you'll learn more about how to do an elevator pitch and you'll practice them. But these are very two very important answers that you need to have. Then go on to say who the buyer is. Uh, the buyer is, is the 
person that makes the purchasing decision and the sum total of those buyers make up the market you're in. More later on that. How will you win? How will you beat the brains out of your competitors? What are your advantages? And, and uh, uh, how superior are you to them? So that it'll be very clear that you're gonna win, they're gonna lose, and uh, you've got a plan to beat them in the marketplace. And finally, how do you make money? You wanna know that you've got a proposition on your hands that you can sell whatever it is you're selling, a product or a service, and, and uh, charge people a whole lot more than what it takes you to make it or service it. So those are the five basic questions. Let's get on into them now. Let's first talk about the premise, the problem you're trying to solve. So there are a lot of questions you can ask yourself, but here are six you should certainly consider. If there are others that are unique to what you're, what you're gonna go after, and however many other questions you wanna to, want to add to this. But first thing is, how do you know it's a problem? You, you thought of it, well, does anybody else think it's a problem? Maybe you talk to a few people that you think have the problem and get some amplification from them on it as to whether or not this is something that bothers them enough that they would actually want a solution to. What lets you know it's a problem? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Is it, can it be expressed with numbers? Can it be expressed with pain or impact? Uh, social cause or the lack thereof? People are, people are suffering for some reason. This is, uh, in, in marketing terms, you may have heard the term uh, identify the pain. Well, this is what this means. What's the pain? What's it look like? Uh, where do the problems show up? In a business, it's somewhere in uh, the organization, marketing or sales or development or manufacturing. Um, <laughs> the administration of the company. Uh, you certainly, as best you can, you want to get some quantification of the problem. What, what measures prove that there's a problem? So it may have to do with a, a loss of business, a high cost of manufacturing, uh, which you can express with numbers. Uh, it could be uh, really long sales cycles, which have to be improved. You can measure that. You can measure almost any of these problems, uh, so you can quantify the impact. If it has no quantification, probably people are not feeling the pain <laughs> if they can't if they can't measure it. Then, who is most affected by the problem within a company or with with people in uh, public life. You know, what kind of people are they? What positions in, the, in a business are affected and in what way? When does the problem most often occur? Uh, it could be seasonal. It could be during, a, during a, a, a step in a process, whether it's manufacturing or sales or, or marketing. Uh, identify where it is. So those are six questions you can ask about the premise of your business. Think of the others that really narrow in and bring to life, bring to life with facts and data uh, and experiences that you can relate that express this problem in a way that most anybody can understand it. Then practice it on, practice it on yourself first, but practice, uh, practice it on people you know and see if it, res see if it resonates. So I talked earlier about <clears throat> what's the impact of the problem, the level of pain. In other words, how big and bad is this problem? You'll often be asked that question. I'm going to tell you, you better know the answer to this. There are lots of problems to be solved in, out there in public life or in business. Many of them never get solved. A company, for example, has a finite budget. Um, they can only spend a certain amount of things to solve problems that they have. The rest they'll live with. You want to make sure that this is big enough, your problem is big enough, that they really want to do something about it. So how do you measure this, the impact of this problem? Impact to the business or impact to a person in public uh, life? Uh, what does it look like now? Uh, in other words, how bad it is. Uh, 
what would you like it to be if you don't like where it is now? So now you start getting a feel for, I wish this problem would either go away or its impact is significantly reduced so that it doesn't matter anymore. And what, therefore, what's the value of the difference between what it is now and what it could be? If you kind of go at this, how big and bad a problem it is in, in a quantifiable way, like, like I'm talking about here, this will, the answer to this will help you later on in developing your value proposition for your marketing programs and help you describe to people how, how good a solution that you've got. Without a quantification of the impact, uh, you're going to have a difficult time selling this to anyone. What's the context of the problem or the setting of it? Where does it take place? Who or what else is impacted by it? I don't mean by name, a person. I mean, within a business, what are the parts of the organization that are affected uh, by this, by the problem you might have or might, in the case of an opportunity, or might that would have benefit from the solution that you're offering? Here's a good one, though. What has stopped them from addressing it already? That is a really important thing to figure out. They're living with it, or living without this thing you want to provide them. That's a great opportunity for them. Uh, so why hasn't it been solved yet? You probably ought to know that. There may be a reason for it. That the reason could be it's not a big and bad enough problem for them to do anything about. So. What's the big picture here? What the context and and when you when you search this out, you talk to a few businesses. You really want to know: is this a problem that that is worth solving or not? And you got to get down and dirty with them. And are they do they have the need or the problem? Do they want a solution or do they see the opportunity and want to have it? And thirdly, are they willing to pay for it? <laughs> Let's go on. And fourthly, pay for it now, not sometime in the future. Get that really clear right up front here. So what if it's an opportunity? Uh, well, what is it? Who will care about it? Let's see. I have a very close friend who is also a, a, a fund executive of, a, of an angel group. I have, I have another one that is kind of a sister organization to his. And I often hear him, him ask entrepreneurs in the course of their presentation, simple, two simple questions. Who cares, he would say. Who cares? What he means by that is who in the organization, who in public life gives a darn about this? And then he, then he goes on to ask the next question, which is, so what? So what? How is this going to matter to, in, to them? So in the case of an opportunity, who will care about it? Why will they care? What are they missing if they don't have your, what you're offering? And, what, and therefore conclude, what is the significance of this opportunity? So when you're dealing with an opportunity, it's not like you're solving a problem, although often they do anyway, or make life better. I mean, who'd have thought that we, our life would be better until the Apple iPhone came along? Um, it reinvented the telephone, for God's sakes. And, and we, you know, <laughs> back in the, the days when the light bulb was <laughs> invented, you know, I guess we, we saw that opportunity. It took a long time to develop it, but, but uh, it took a long time for people to understand that their life was going to be a whole lot better if they could have daylight at night. <laughs> so, so I'm rambling here a little bit, but describe the opportunity in the manner I just described. You, and these are the two ways you're going to establish the, present, the, the premise of your business. Okay, once you've got that, you want to talk about your solution, what it is you're going to offer. Now, this is not time for a science project. I'm not looking for how whatever it is you're building works or what the methodology is for the service you're about to provide people. What I want to know is 
if the solution really solves the problem. So is your solution unique? It should be. Uh, if it's not, then you're a me too out there competing with others that have already solved this problem. You're going to have to be better than them in some way. It'd be nice if you were unique. So how do you solve the problem? And express it in terms of what the problem was that you just got through describing. Who else has tried to solve it? That is really good to know. Know that they failed at it. Why did they fail? Has anyone solved the whole darn problem or just pieces of it? What's lacking in their solutions, which may have led to their failure or slowed them down where, and others took over the market they were going to go after? What's different about your approach? This is really important in that later on when you try to describe your competitive advantage, your differentiation, you need to know and be able to explain in really simple terms what's the difference in what you've got versus everybody else. And therefore, what is better about your approach? And quantifiably so. And we'll talk later about how to do competitive analysis so you actually measure that. But <clears throat> is your approach practical or kind of a fairy tale? It's got to be buildable, deliverable, priced at a point that's, that's, that's uh, worth paying. You, you, the benefit you will get makes it worth paying whatever you're going to be asking for it. So there's seven questions you might ask yourself about the solution to, to the problem. So a very important, important aspect of your solution is its innovativeness. Is your solution innovative? It sure would be good if it is. Uh, and so therefore, what is your innovation? Now again, this is not a chance to show your prowess in science and technology. It's really talk, to talk about the, the manner in which you've solved the problem and the benefits that you, you have brought to the person or persons who have the problem, not how it works again. We'll talk about that later. We're trying to figure out, is this solution any darn good? Does it solve the problem or not? Stick to that. What do you see that no one else sees? with respect to the way you've approached this solution. What do you uniquely know that no one else does and that you now are, are poised to implement and provide to them? What unique connections have you made that helped you find that out or helped you put it together? Uh, this is a time to talk about perhaps uh, people you've already worked with to design or innovate uh, your solution. It helps to know that some really smart people are working on this. And with, so with whom do you collaborate in coming up with this innovation? Okay, so this ends part one of ideation. We're going to go on to part two next. But as you do so, you can digest this uh, first 10 minutes or so of ideation by simply answering the first two questions in the ideation template. It's going to, that's part of your homework anyway. Where you're going to describe your view of the problem and the solution you have for it. Then immediately go on to take part two of ideation. You have to do both parts in order, order to be prepared for the, the ideation class that's coming up for you. As a, as a, as a reminder, your contact information for your instructor is innovationcenter at faytech.edu at 919-522-0722. You can also reach your instructor through his virtual office on Blackboard or the uh, Innovation Center's uh, forum for questions that's been made available to you. So get your homework done on this one and move on immediately to part two.